Okay, uh, this is rigging custom rig uh, step six. Yeah, we're going to be working on the arm rig. Uh, this is probably going to be a two-parter for the arm, um, starting off with an IK arm, and then hopefully, if I can get to it, the uh, FK arm as well. Um, okay, so one thing that I did change and you'll notice that my a lot of my spine controls aren't here is I did add a display layer for my center controls I didn't add this one because everything is parented to this guy so if you add him your entire skeleton disappears as well so um, we will just leave him as is for right now and then I also added my uh, pull vectors to my left and right controls respectively okay so now we want to start with our hand. We're going to go to IK and you can set this later or I'm going to set it now to RP solver and I'm going to select the shoulder and if I were to select the hand which is where we want to pivot or we, where we want our uh, IK handle to be to be able to control the hand you will get this awkward bending motion in the forearm, which we don't want. We don't want to break our forearm like that. So what you can do is select the shoulder and then select the forearm instead and you get that nice bending motion at the, at the uh, elbow without breaking the forearm. And then the trick to this is uh, going to our hypergraph here and you can hit F uh, select the input outputs and you want to select the effector and then once the effector is selected you can hold down come over here and hold down D as in dog D as in Victor to move the pivot to the wrist now once you do that when you select your IK it still bends the way we want it, but our handle is actually at the wrist. So that works. Pretty satisfied with that. Okay. So the next thing we want is an actual control handle controlling this guy. Now I'm going to name this left arm IK, like so. Do. Okay, so now what we want to do is create a control handle, and I'm just going to use a simple NURBS uh, curve circle, and I'm going to center it on my wrist, like so. Now I want it to be running across the wrist here, so I'm going to rotate it in X, or uh, rotate it in Z, I'm sorry, 90 degrees and then we can scale it down to about the size that we want something that's easy to select but doesn't also get in the way so you don't want to make your controls super huge but you don't want to make them super tiny either Okay. <clears throat> so now what I want to do is freeze my transformations so I have a shelf button for that Bam. and then here I can name this left hand control as I monkey paw the keyboard <laughs> type out a bunch of random characters okay so the issue I have here is my control handle is not really in line with my hand but one thing we don't want to do is have transforms in our controls that's why we freeze our transformations but in this case it's going to be all right because what's m more important for me is that my control rotates properly across the wrist and I'll explain that in just a second so what I do is I go into my my top view and rotate my Y axis so it goes across the hand and through the forearm like so go to my front view match the Y axis line 
by rotating the Z axis. Usually I go through the middle finger, forearm, that's usually the middle of the hand because you have the two fingers here, but two fingers up here. But anyway, um, the this axis here is not as important because the other two should lay it up and plus you're only really rotating in these guys. So I mean if you really wanted to you could set that up. It's not that necessary though. So we have this, that. So my thinking is I want my hand to rotate like this. That's going to be my Z axis of my control. And then I want my hand to rotate like this, which is going to be the, uh, here, which is going to be the Y axis here. So I guess we could, Let's it like so. Okay. So once I'm comfortable enough where my control is. check it in all my views, make sure it looks good. What I'm going to do is take this guy and use the translation data for the hand control to drive our IK. So we select our hand control, shift select our IK, go up to constraint, and point constraint. And we want to go to the option box. Make sure that we're constraining across all axes and our maintain offset is checked. So now if we select our control, we can move around our hand and it moves like so. Okay. That's good. So now what we want to do is we want to have our rotate in Y rotate our hand back and forth from top to bottom like that and then from side to side with the rotate Z okay we don't want to rotate in X because that rotation really comes from your forearm and that's why we have the extra joint here so what we're gonna do is select our control handle shift select our wrist joint go up to constraint and orient constraint option box now I already have this set, but just in case, I'm gonna reset my settings. We wanna maintain offset, and then we don't wanna rotate in X, so we're gonna check Y and Z. Hit apply, and test it out. There we go. We do get this flipping, and that's really because our um, we have a rotation in our uh, control but we'll be able to solve that fairly easily in just a moment. But we want to check our rotate in Z as well, which works as far as I'm concerned. And our translate still works fine. Okay. So now let's uh, go ahead and clean up that flipping here so we don't get that. So what I'm going to do is make a note of my starting rotations so that I can match these uh, once I rotate and I'll explain in just a second. Okay so once I've made a note of my rotations I want to go to my attribute editor and I want to pivot in Y all the way to the point where it just starts to rotate in X. So about right there. 
And that's about the maximum bending that a wrist can really do anyway. So I'm pretty satisfied and we're rotating in Y. So we're gonna pass that negative amount over to the minimum side. Flip it back over and do the same thing, just to the point where it starts to kind of rotate and flip. So about right there, which is about the maximum a wrist can bend before it breaks. Okay. So I'm pretty satisfied with, oops. There we go. Pretty satisfied with that. Now I want to enter my value that I made note of to bring it back to essentially zero like so. <sighs> and then I want to fix this guy. Now your hand really only rotates ever so slightly across the Z axis. So I'm going to set this to my positive amount in Z and then cast this to my negative mount in Z and that'll lock that and then I want to add my value that I made note of to bring it back to our imitation zero point here okay so now we can rotate and our limits are set back and forth and we don't have rotation okay so now what I want is I want to rotate in X here and we are getting a little bit of a rotation and that's really just because my rotations are off in comparison to the joint uh, but we'll be solving that in just a second so one option you can do, and you have two options of doing this, is you can do the method that I prefer in using the rotate X for the control. I think it's more intuitive for an artist than uh, to have to go to a custom attribute. And uh, that would be the second method, is adding a custom attribute called forearm rotate and uh, having them select that attribute and then manipulate the attribute by hand. It's just one extra step that the animator has to go through. If they're already moving the joint like this, they can just move it accordingly. So to do that, we're going to select our control, go up to Edit and Connection Editor, and that loads it into the outputs. And then for the inputs, we want to load our forearm like so go down to rotate that X and find our rotate in our forearm match it to X so now when I rotate I rotate at the forearm and not the wrist now you can set limits for this as well um, I'm not going to set the limits until uh, later once I'm rigged uh, once I'm bound because when I zero these out, they're going to straighten out my wrist and then I can figure out where my 180 degree flip is for the uh, forearm twist, the forearm rotation. So I'm gonna leave it for now until I get to a more complete stage. But definitely make note of it. Um, one way of doing that, making note of something that you still have to do so you don't forget, just go to your, custom, your attribute editor for your uh, control and just leave a note. So uh, we are going to add limit for the forearm rotation. And that makes a note in there so when we select it, we know what, we're, what we have left to do. Okay. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is set up my pull vector, and it's going to be the exact same process as the uh, the knees down here, 
except um, I like to keep with the same convention for pull vectors in using the letters. And um, actually, I should really lock and hide these channels so that we can't accidentally rotate these we don't want to. There we go. OK. And same thing here for our uh, root controller. We're not going to be rotating. We are just going to be translating the root controller. So that's that. Um, just kind of cleaning up the channels a little bit. Uh, we are going to be translating, we are going to be rotating, but we're not going to be needing the scale, so go ahead and lock that. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to use the same convention as here, but to distinguish the difference between the two, um, I used uppercase here, I'm going to use lowercase up here. So create text option box, and we're going to start with the L since we're working on the left side. Create. Close. We can just uh, go into our front view here and center the pivot, snap it to the elbow, and then just move it back. Scale it down a little bit. It's a little more manageable. There we go. Okay. So now it's the uh, same process as the knee. Okay, so you want to make sure that you select your controller and then shift select your IK. Go up to constraint and pull vector. Now it is going to rotate this guy, and that's because you know it's now controlling the rotate, but the beauty of it is it just rotated. So if we turn back on our character mesh we can manipulate our pull vector to match our elbow which is about like that now that is really far off and reason being is if we bring our elbow back up and we remember that we added our twist in here for our IK here Actually, no, I didn't add a twist, huh? But I can't. That's intriguing. My apologies. Okay, so um, I want my pull vector to be right there, matching my elbow. I might be able to go down a little bit, matching my elbow, approximately where it should be pointing, which is actually down here quite far, actually. Uh, that's about right. Okay. So now I can actually fine tune my uh, hand here, like so, to match. And that way my pull vector doesn't have to be like way down here just to make it work and way up here and so on and so forth. Okay, so now we have an elbow, it's constantly pointing to the pull vector, the hand doesn't rotate with it, which is kind of what we want, because we want to be able to control that rotation. So there, we are set. So now I'm going to go in here and call this left elbow control. And uh, one thing that I probably should have done and didn't, which is an easy fix, is to freeze my transformations. So just go ahead and hit undo, get rid of that pull vector, as I forgot to take care of it. So to get rid of that pull vector, you can just go into your hypergraph, bring up these guys 
and there's your pull vector. You just hit delete. There we go. Okay. So now we want to name this left elbow. Ah, not in our translate x attribute, but our name. Maya allows me to select it. So we go left uh, elbow control. So, okay, and so now what I want to do is match where my elbow is pointing here, select my controller, shift select my IK, constraint, and pull vector, bam. So close, but no harm, no foul. Let's go in here and uh, affect the twist a little bit to uh, get it just right. Like so. Okay. So now we have a control controlling our pull vector and I did not once again freeze my transformations. It's probably best that you don't rig when you're super tired. You tend to run into these issues. But, you know, I guess it kind of helps sometimes because of the repetition. Just to make sure, I want to go into my hypergraph and make sure that that pull vector is indeed not actually there. Point constraint, that's right. Check this, yeah. Okay. So then we move it into place. And this video is getting really long, and I apologize. I usually don't make mistakes like this in the video, but I really am just trying to get everything done that I have to get done. Okay, so freeze transformations in the location that I want it to be in. Shift select, constraint, pull vector, big bam. That's right. That's where I want it. Select my IK and then manipulate the twist till it's about right. About right there. Okay. So now we have the, the, the distance that we want um, without any transformations here. Okay? So then you can go in and easily just change the color. So, you know, go into your channels, add it to your uh, left controls, same thing with the uh, hand here, grab your IK throw it into the untouchables, and there you go. Bam. Okay. So uh, next thing you want to do is probably take this guy, add it to this guy here. So now when he moves, that moves. Your hands don't move, but um, you can add those to it as well, like so. There you go. So now if our character takes a takes a step, our hands move with it. Which is exactly what we want. Okay. So now what you want to do is uh, or now what we're, what we're going to do is um, set up our finger controls. So we want to add finger curls. So we're just going to add custom attribute and I'm going to go down my hand so it makes it easier for me to know to, to know and remember since my character's palm is facing out I'm going to start with the thumb curl and I'm just going to add that without any add any uh, min max default uh, defaults 
And then I want to go to my index, curl, uh, middle, curl, uh, ring, curl, uh, pinky, curl, and that's it. Um, you can also do a uh, finger spread, if I can spell, and that'll just fan out the fingers like that. Okay, so now we have these custom attributes, now we need them to do something. Um, one thing you do want to keep in mind at this next stage is that your local rotational axes are lined up. The exception is the end here. And you'll notice with mine, local rotational axes, you'll notice with mine, my Y's are pointing across where the joint would bend. And my uh, X is pointing down my chain and my Z is pointing out. And that should be consistent with all of my fingers here. It looks like they're all pretty much the same. Yep. And the thumb as well. Out and the uh, actually the thumb's a little bit off. So that's actually good. We'll fix that. Um, perfect example. So you'll notice that the uh, X is not uh, is not pointing down the chain. That is a big problem for us. So select the hierarchy, local rotational axes. Actually, no, we're right. Okay, so I was wrong. X is pointing down the chain, Y is up. So we'll be rotating in Z to curl the finger. So perfect. If by chance, and uh, I'll do it to this end joint here because it doesn't really matter for the end joint. If by chance your uh, your joints aren't set, your local rotational axes are not pointing in the right direction, um, what you can do is you can just enter component mode by going up here or hitting F8 and make sure that the question mark is selected because that's the local rotational axes so that they become selectable and then you just rotate them into place. So down the chain and like so. So you can do that to all of your joints and then you'll be, uh, you'll be right on target. Okay, so out of component mode, I'm going to hide my local rotational axes for all these guys because I know they are right. There we go. Okay, so now what we want to do is assign these to something. We can do that by selecting our control handle, going up to animate, and down to set driven keys and set. And that's going to bring up this window here. And our controller, our control hand, our hand control is going to be the driver. And we're going to start with the thumb. So we select the thumb here. Now, one thing we don't want to do is select the hierarchy because if we load that as driven, ah, it didn't do it for me this time. Sometimes it'll actually select all the DAG nodes and the shape nodes and all of that, and that is not a good thing. But this time we're set, so we didn't. Uh, it didn't do that to me, which is a blessing. So, uh, so it selects all the joints. If by chance it did do that for you, you can just select the uh, base joint, and then just sit, shift select each joint up the chain, and it'll do the same thing. So we select these guys, and we know that we want to rotate in Z to curl. So I'm going to go, going to thumb curl, and then rotate in Z. And just to test it out, 
I'm going to select all of my driven, go over to Z, and rotate it. And you can see that it's actually rotating in, like so. Now, um, I don't know about you, but my thumb doesn't necessarily bend this way, and that's not a bad, that's not a, a big thing. I'll show you how to fix that. But what I do want is a natural f uh, over uh, hyperextension like this, because our thumb does sort of hyperextend from the back here. Okay, so go ahead and zero that out. And we want to select Rotate Z, thumb control, make sure everything is selected properly, and hit key. And that's going to key it at the zero place. So if we put zero over here, it goes straight back to this place right here. Okay. Now what we want to do is select our minimum value. Um, we left our attributes open, so uh, you can select anything. I usually go with a point uh, with a negative five for my hyper extension. So I put negative five in the thumb curl, select my joints, select rotate Z over in the uh, channel box, and then set my hyper extension. Which I want a little bit of a flex, like so, and hit key. And then select your hand and set that back to zero and bam it works and then from here I go uh, three times what I uh, have for the hyper extension because the hyper extension is usually a quick flick if anything uh, and the curl I want a little bit more fluid control and so I'll give it a little bit higher of a value say 15 so we select these guys select our Z axis and then curl. Now this is where I need to make some adjustments. Your thumb bends like this at a 90 degree angle which is right but this joint right here doesn't necessarily bend that far so just select it and bend it back to about where your uh, about where your thumb would bend. So just bend your thumb like that and look at it. You know, the maximum it will bend and it does go in a little bit like this. So just select all of them. Again, you have your rotate, hit key. So now if you go to your thumb control and you scrub through, it goes out, hyper extends at zero, it's in place, and we have our curl just like that. Okay, so now what you want to do is do the same thing to all your other, uh, to your fingers, and uh, I will walk you through one more just to uh, be safe and make sure that this is concrete. And so we select our base, and select the hierarchy, and make see if this is going to work, and it did, sweet and we're still rotating in Z, so that is selected, and if you want to make sure you can, and that is actually wrong. And that's why we double check, because my, uh, I want to rotate in Y, in fact. So select that, select Y, now we're getting that curl that we want. Like that. Okay. So that's why you double check, and then make sure that your index curl is selected, and now you can hit key to key it at zero. Select your hand, index curl, set it to negative five. And this is going to be the hyper extension. So I'm going to look down the profile of my finger and set a hyper extension. Something about like that. And then hit key. Set this to 15 which is our maximum curl. Set that. Or select our uh, hierarchy here. Go to Y and uh, 
set our curl about like that. Key it, and then check it. Always double check. There we go. So again, same thing with the thumb. If you do uh, get some uh, rotation that you want to shave back, just rotate it and make sure that everything is selected. And then make sure you're only rotating in the, uh, the channel that you are keying. So only in Y. And you can actually change these to any kind of rotation you want, uh, so long as it's in the rotation that you're keying, otherwise it won't uh, set the values. So I'm going to um, pause the video and take care of the rest of these, and uh, if you want to do the rest of these and you need help, just rewind and follow uh, what I did with the index finger, and just replace index with uh, your middle finger, ring finger, pinky, so on and so forth. Okay, so now that you have that, you should have something like this. You can create a fist, hyperextend your hand, so on and so forth. Um, next thing we want to do is do this fanning motion with our fingers. Uh, the thumb I will control a little bit differently. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, the thumb will control a little bit differently, but I do want a fanning motion with the fingers because usually you do very rarely will you actually rotate uh, one finger independently. It's usually all of them. Uh, so we're going to select our finger spread and select our fingers. Both of them is driven, like so. And we'll be rotating in the Z axis, axis it looks like. So select Z, make sure, yup, that works. Now, this method we're going to be doing a tiny bit different. Um, full maximum spread is usually the angle of the uh, joint here. So that's about about where you want to go. Uh, so I start off selecting a joint, select the Z, which is what we want to rotate in, and bam. So this is going to be my default. So I can select all of them and select Z and fingers at zero, so key. And then I want to set this to say, 10. And that's going to be, 0 is going to be my minimum. Uh, or actually, set this to 15. Do the same thing. Uh, 15 is going to be all the way fanned out. Negative 5 is going to be uh, where they're, they're really just compressed in together. And then 0 is going to be a relaxed state. So uh, set this to 15. And then you go through each joint here in your rotate Z and rotate them into place. So here, rotate Z like that. Next one, rotate Z. This one's pretty good. And the pinky, rotate Z out like that. That gives me a good finger spread, give or take. And yeah, maybe bring this in a little bit more. Uh, about like that. Okay, so now you want to select all of them. Make sure you rotate Z selected and key. Test it out. Just like that. Okay, so now we want to set this to negative 5. And do the same thing. So rotate in Z and bring these guys closer. Your middle finger doesn't really move. So one thing to keep in mind, and also keep in mind that you're, you have a little bit of a bulk around these fingers that we're not seeing because our mesh is not uh, following. So then you just select your ring, rotate Z, bring him in a little bit, like so. And the pinky follows the ring finger, like so. Select all of them. 
Make sure your rotate Z is selected and your finger spread. Hit key. So now what we should have is a negative five for the together. This is a relaxed state position and then finger spread like so. Okay. So lastly, what we want to do is uh, edit our attributes. We can close out the set driven key box. And we want to go through here and, and add our negative 5 minimum, 15 maximum to all of these guys. Now, unfortunately, you can't shift select. You have to do all these by hand. But it takes a few seconds. So there you go. Okay, so now that you have that, you can close that out and just test your controls. You should snap to the locations that they are meant to be at. That looks good. That looks good. That looks good. That looks good. I'm on to a fist maybe. Change our rotations. Hyperextension. Good. So all this is zero. Okay, and that pretty much wraps up the uh, the arm. Uh, you can also add joints in here for shoulder blades, and we'll, we'll probably work on that later. Uh, we'll add a influence object for the shoulder blade, things like that. But um, for right now, as far as the IK goes, that's pretty much it. So you can move your character, rotate his hand in, so on and so forth. And everything follows him when he moves. Okay. Uh, so in the next step, we will um, probably work on a FK hand and uh, switch it. Um, although that is going to be extra and it's going to be a bonus. so. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to work on that or not just yet. Uh, I will add it later on, but um, it's uh, these are mostly tutorials for my class, and so it's not that uh, it's not necessary for our class. So um, yeah.